Hi, everyone, and welcome to week number nine of our Joyful Journeys interview series, where we've been highlighting amazing women in our community um, that are doing incredible work that lines up perfectly with what our Girls on the Run participants across the region are learning about this week at practice. And this week, week nine, we're nearing the end of our 10-week season, and this week is so exciting because it is Community Impact Project Week. Uh, so this is the time where every team has decided how they want to give back in their community and make a difference. And they're implementing those projects in a variety of different ways. And we thought no, but no one is better to chat with than Denise Gavilan of Kids Giving Back, the founder um, who has started her own nonprofit organization, completely focused on getting kids involved in volunteerism. So Denise, thank you so much for being here with us today. Oh, absolutely. Thank you for the invitation. Yeah. So just to get started, I um, want to share with our Girls on the Run community, tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us a little bit about Kids Give Back and what you guys do in the community. Sure. So my name is Denise Gavilan. I'm the founder and executive director of Kids Give Back. Um, I founded Kids Give Back in 2019 after I was a parent volunteer at my kids' elementary school. And we used to, I used to show up once a month and have the kids do volunteer work, which was really fun. Um, as my kids aged out of that school, I thought, well, why are we focusing on kids volunteering in one school? Why don't we just make this bigger? So I started talking to friends and family, nonprofit leaders, kind of saying, what do you all think about a nonprofit dedicated to kids volunteering? And everybody said yes, because this model doesn't exist anywhere. It exists in small pockets. Mm -hmm. If you go to a church that volunteers, you Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, but the model that we've created does not exist. So it's really exciting. Um, to see it grow. Yeah, that's fantastic. And you're you're totally right. It exists in these small pockets. Like this is a small pocket of Girls on the Run and it's a small right. pocket of other youth organizations. Um, so it's wonderful that you're kind of centralizing um, this model to, to really instill that spirit of volunteerism. Um, Absolutely. In, in our community, which is so important. And, you know, our Girls on the Run participants, they're engaging and giving back this week. And for some of them, it's their first introduction into volunteerism. Right. Um, so why do you think instilling that spirit of giving back is so important um, to start doing that early on with children? Well, I think that's a great question. We start the kids at age six, right? And I keep using the ter terms, we want them to be civic minded at six years old because we want them to understand that no matter their age, no matter their socioeconomic background, no matter their skills, they have something to give back to the community. They do. And people need them and they need them. I mean, they need each other, right? Um, volunteering is really, really good from a mental health perspective. And so when we have young children come into our program and they've never volunteered, and some of them will say to me, Miss Denise, you know, we're making meals for the homeless. I've never even made a peanut butter sandwich. I'm like, well, guess what? You're going to learn to be a leader. You're going to learn what it means to work as a team. And you're going to learn what it means to give back to your community in a very meaningful way. So I love when the little ones come in. I just, the little ones are so funny because they're a little hesitant, right? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I know how to give back to the community. And then we'll, we talk about um, the four T's of volunteering. We call it using your time, your talent, your treasures, and teamwork. And we go over all of those things and they always get stumped on the one about talents. They're like, what do you mean you give back using talents? And I'm like, do you know how to draw? <gasps> yes. Do you know how to play the piano? Yes. And the light goes off and they start realizing that at that young age, they can use those skills to give back and their talents. So it's really, it's just fun to watch it all their lights go off in their heads and they're like, oh yeah, this is great. I can do this. So yeah, yeah, I love that. I have so many thoughts running through my head. You know, I love the tie to mental health. You know, that is such a Absolutely. Key component of our program. And we know that that giving back, you know, instills and fosters a sense of accomplishment yes. and confidence and also just care and compassion, you know, that yeah. we're looking to instill in our go-to participants. And then also that talent piece, you know, I think back to when I've done my community impact project with my team and it's like, all right, who are my bakers? Who's going to bake something awesome for our right. bake sale? Who right. are my creative girls who want to design a flyer? And it's right. really just guiding each girl to identify what her strength is and what she can bring to that table to make the impact in the project. 
Yeah, it's pretty fun. Like we have a summer volunteer camp and those camps sell out every year. They're half day, one week programs. And we offer them four times a year in the summer. And all week, like you'll get kids who are really like brand new. You know, they might've just gotten out of kindergarten and they're very shy, but maybe they brought a friend or an older sibling and they're just not sure what they're there for. And by the end of the week, we give them reflection journals so at the beginning of the week, they we ask them to write or draw every day. What did you do? How did it make you feel? And they go home and they have these journals and they share them with their parents and they just want to then continue volunteering. Our mission is to inspire the next generation of volunteer leaders. That is where we're headed, right? So little baby steps, right? But But they're doing amazing volunteer work. Like when you look at our summer volunteer camp, the big showcase project they do every year is they make 200 meals for people in need. And, you know, I look at these kids and they're working in teams and they're making sandwiches and salads and desserts and, and packaging everything so thoughtfully. And I go, because of you, 200 people are getting dinner tonight. That's a big impact on those kids. And they walk home and they go, wow, 200 people got dinner tonight because of us. Yeah. You know, so it's really like, it's about giving children opportunities that they can relate to and everybody can relate to being hungry, right? Everybody can relate to animals. We always have projects for animals. <laughs> everybody can relate to other children who may not be um, as healthy as they are. So when you say to them, today, we're making art kits for children who are in the hospital. And one of them will go, oh, my cousin was in the hospital and it was really boring and we brought him all kinds of stuff. I get it. So, you know, it's really about empowering them to understand how they can make a difference. Yeah, a hundred percent. And that's, I think, you know, something that I hear tying, you tying in and we tie into our program of if we work with these kids at this young of an age and they kind of realize their passion, yes. um, you know, we can unleash that passion early and guide them that you can make a difference here. Um, Absolutely. Back in seven, we yes. chatted with a local high school student and in, as a high schooler, she's already founded um, her own, um, her own business, get, getting prosthetic limbs to um, amputees. Wow. She is an advocate for women and girls in her County. It, it just amazing, but she just never spoke, know. She spoke to, well, this is my passion. My passion is empowering girls and women. So it's easy for me to step into that role and kind of run with it because I realized at a young age what my passion was. And I think when we give kids the opportunity to explore different ways of giving back, they can unlock that and realize, well, I really like working with hunger and making sure that we have hunger relief in our community. Right. And, you know, maybe by the time they're in high school, they've founded their own nonprofit about it's Impossible. true. We, you know, building off that. So um, the summer after COVID, when we brought all the live camps back, but we are all still masked, um, you know, we are a nonprofit, so we have to fundraise. And these kids were at my camp and they, they came to camp and they're all whispering to each other, like, don't tell her, don't tell her. They're like behind my back and quiet, quiet, quiet. And they all come up. There's five of them. They're all neighbors. And they hand me a bag of money and they say, we had a lemonade stand last night in our neighborhood and we raised $60 for kids give back. Oh my goodness. And then I'm like, okay, that's it. My job's done. I'm going to cry. <laughs> I looked at them and I said, wow, you know, and they're like, I made the, I made the cookies. She made the lemonade. He made the stands, blah, blah, blah. I mean, they would, they had totally done what I told them to do, which is teamwork. Use your talent, use your time, get together as a team. And they were so proud that they raised $60, which is amazing in one night, right? Yes. But to build on your idea of the, the, we're talking about food, I said, what would you like us to do with this money? And they said, can you put it towards a project that feeds people? And I said, absolutely. We have another camp next week. And we took the $60 and we bought supplies to make more snack packs. We were already making snack packs. And so I emailed their parents and I said, you know, your children are amazing. Tell them we use the money. It's exactly how they wanted us to. So, so that just, you know, that level of inspiration, you don't always see that result, but that was like, oh, okay, now I know why I have kids give back, <laughs> you know? Exactly. And um, 
you know, I love that you break it down into, into the four T's, the time, talent, the treasure, and, um, you know, the teamwork and the teamwork aspect is so important. You know, one of the things I love as a coach with the girls on their own curriculum that surrounds the community impact project is it's completely driven by the team. The girls do different activities over the course of a handful of practices where they're deciding what group they want to impact. They're deciding how they're going to do it and they're implementing it on their own. You love know, that. Really I love that. about them creating this community impact project. And I right. think that's so important um, as adults for us to kind of take that pause. Cause a lot of times we want to step in and we want to make sure everything goes smoothly. And we want to make sure the yes. lemon stand makes as much money as it can. Yes. But there's beauty in letting it just play out. And so why do you think as adults, it's important for us to listen to the kids when it comes to directing these projects and giving back? Um, I think that's a really good question. Why, why should we listen to the kids? Cause they have really good ideas and, and they, and I think sometimes we underestimate what they know and what they can do. And I give that example of the meal, right? Mm -hmm. When you tell a six-year-old she's going to be on a team to build 200 meals and they just shake their heads, like how on earth would I do that? But then when you prove to them and you prove to the parents and you say to the parents, don't underestimate, your kid just made 200 sandwiches, Yeah, right? They can make their lunch tomorrow. (laughs) Um, But we have to listen to kids because they have amazing ideas. And At our last camp, we put them into teams and had them come up with their own community impact project. It was like a kid's impact project. And they had to talk together and they had to find a nonprofit that they would support. I was like blown away by these kids. They know so much. And the nice thing is they have access to so much information so they can look up, you know, one one group wanted to help Uh, plant trees. And they found this organization in Fairfax County that young kids can work with. They're like, we can go here. It'll cost this much money. I was like, okay, but you have to listen to the kids because sometimes they're closer to the issues than we are. And um, it's also just fun to empower them. Like it's fun to empower them. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. We just have to give them and let them make mistakes. How do you learn? You don't learn unless you make a mistake. You're allowed to fail. You're allowed to fail. But then from from failure can become come success. And, you know, I laugh about we received a we received a donation from Eastern's Automotive a couple of years ago. They surprised us with money. And, you know, I was, oh, guy, what should we do with the money, kids? And this was the year when there were all these rescue puppies for adoption because there were floods in Louisiana or something. They're like, we should adopt all 40 puppies with that money. I'm like, well, that's a good idea, but yeah, you know, not sure what we're all going to do with 40 puppies, <laughs> but it's with anything. You have to listen to the kids. They have great ideas. They're very energetic. And when they own it, they own it, right? The passion yeah. comes out and oh, the output is amazing. So it's really, it is, it's just fun listening to them. They're yeah. very cute. So, yeah. Um, Well, Denise, it has been absolutely a joy and a pleasure to chat with you and for you to be a part of our interview series and a part of our GoDoor community this fall. Um, Yeah. For everyone to see this interview and know about kids giving kids give back. Kids give back. Yep. They want to keep their their kiddo kiddo going with their volunteerism. You know, we 100% would love for them to join you guys in the um, amazing work that you guys do. Thank Um, you. Yeah. Yeah. And we also do, you know, just one other aspect of it there's two aspects. Number one is we do offer family volunteer opportunities. Those came out of COVID where the kids and the families come together. And then while our programming is good for children ages six through 12, the minute those kids turn 13, they're empowered to be leaders within our organization. So we hire them as staff and we bring them on as camp counselors and event staff and so committee members so know that we really don't let them go <laughs> we want them to keep giving back um as long as they possibly can with us I love that love that yeah. love the longevity we have a similar thing where right you don't talk with girls on the run you can go to a heart and soul middle school team and after that you can become a junior coach like the journey right. is built and so right beautiful it's fun watching some of the kids I've had some kids in the program since my days at the elementary school and it's just fun to watch them grow with us so yeah so we look forward to it visit our website follow us on social you know we're not going anywhere <laughs> absolutely absolutely well thank you so much it's been a joy and a pleasure and we cannot wait to see what all the kids 
Giving Back, do next. All right. Thank you.